594 net profit every single month. So the profit that I'm making is actually more than what my entire mortgage taxes and, and insurance is. And um, Red, I know you just sent out a new model for your clients to use and to kind of help us. Um, but I, I, I hope my numbers are good. Like I did the, just a quick like cash on cash calculation, um, like 33, like 34% cash on cash return. I mean, like there's people out there that are looking at, you know, they're hoping to like score like 12%, 15% at a highest and to think I have the 34% cash on cash is Hey guys, Rhett here. What is going on? I am super, super excited to bring this gentleman onto the show today. Guys, Alex is a Section 8 real estate investor. He's an out-of-state investor. He is kicking butt. He's taking names. Alex, I'm so excited to have you on the channel today. Thanks, Rhett. Great. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Definitely. And guys, so Alex has been doing this now for a little under a year. Uh, we're at probably, Alex, the eight month, nine month mark of working together? Yeah, yeah, just that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have one Section 8 rental property, right? You have another one under contract. You're, you're kicking ass. You're moving on to this next one. And I wanna talk first about you. What got you interested in Section 8? How you and I linked up? Just get into that a little bit and 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 tell the viewers a little bit about what your story has been like. Yeah. Um, so about me, um, I work in corporate America. I work in HR for a pharmaceutical company. I've been doing that for about 10 years. And I've always liked real estate. Uh, when I was in high school, I actually was an assistant for um, a, a fairly well established real estate agent in my hometown in central Florida. And she kind of got me turned on to just real estate in general. Um, buying, selling, the amount of money that is in real estate was pretty attractive to me also being so young. Um, so I just kind of learned the ropes about real estate there, just being her assistant, going to showings, answering calls, things like that. And she was really the one who encouraged me to buy my first house. And I bought my first house at 22 um, when the market was really low um, and I flipped it and I sold it. And then I got into another one. I flipped it and I sold it and I got into another one. And now I'm on my third one. <laughs> so I'm not gonna flip this one that I'm in now. Um, this is kind of the, the stabilized home, I think. Uh, we, we put too much money into it to flip it, I think. But um, yeah, and I, I, I just, I kind of got turned on to the, buy, rehab, sell. And then I didn't necessarily see myself doing that long-term. Um, so yeah, I just started exploring. Um, I really didn't know a lot about the Section 8 um, market, but I fell into it. Um, and right, actually, I don't think I've told you this, but <clears throat> I sat on your channel for like a year. <laughs> I did. Like I sat on your channel for a year and I'm sure you know, and I'm sure people watching this will know that there's a lot of people like you on YouTube that are doing something similar. Um, but I think what stood out about you specifically was you were very vocal on the values that you have um, and the behaviors that you expected from your team and the values and um that you have for people you know that are in need of a place to call home um and it just you kind of stood out in that aspect and that was really important to me too it's just finding someone that knows about the market that wasn't just turn and burn i feel like you have a, a good balance of ethics while also capitalizing on an industry that's available. So um, yeah, I sat on you for about a year. I just learned more. I watched other people, what they were doing, and I could kind of see a, a difference just in the mindset. Um, so yeah, I reached out to you. I think I reached out to you in 
actually, I think I reached out to you around this time last year. And then by July, I closed on my first property. Yeah. And Alex, it's cool because <clears throat> your background, right? You had bought properties before, like you said, you flipped them. And one thing about that is it's very gratifying when you're doing it because you know you're about to make a, a, a nice piece of change. But then once you sell it, you have nothing to show for it, right? Mm -hmm. You got some money in your pocket, but yeah. you have no appreciation value long-term. It's not paying you every single month. And I think something in your head said, you know what, this is great, but I wanna do something that I can have forever and that I can enjoy the perks of over the long term. And you said, I'm going to set out and, and build this, this rental portfolio. And that's exactly what you're doing. And, and I love that because now you're going to be able to say, look, I've done the, the buy and flip. I've done the buy and hold. This is what I like best. This is what I like about the flips. This is what I like about the buy and holds and the passive income piece of it. So it's going to give you such a, uh, a, round view of real estate and it's going to give you perspective on both of those options so you've been successful with the with the flips now you've been successful with the buy and holds in regards to the property that you have right now you bought it like you said in july you paid sixty five thousand dollars for it when i tell people that you can buy properties for that cheap they go you know, this guy's full of crap. Same here. Same here. <laughs> like I'm telling people like, oh, we, you know, we, we bought, we bought a rental in Alabama. And when I tell them the price, they're almost like in disbelief, but yeah, I mean, it's crazy. And we got lucky with it. We, it just, it fell into place. And for my first one, I'm kind of, I don't know. It's like a, it's a, it's a double edged sword because I'm like, okay, they're not all going to be like this. Um, so I have to kind of reset my expectations a little bit, but yeah, 65,000, um, it only needed $1,500 worth of rehab. Yeah. So I mean, it just, it really worked out really well. Um, so I can dive into like numbers. Yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's hop in. Um, so I did finance it, um, and that was something I was kind of concerned about was, is someone going to lend me money for this low of an amount? The answer is yes. Like there's plenty of people out there that will pick up the loan for this amount of money. Um, so all in like cash out, that includes closing costs, the $1,500 worth of rehab. And then there was some kind of unrelated expenses that I had to kind of work through. Um, and I totaled this up. It landed just at about $21,000 like cash out. Um, and then uh, we were able to rent it at a pretty high higher rate um, at $1,219. Um, so $1,219 a month. Um, and then my payment all in. So that includes my my mortgage, the taxes, the insurance is 503. So um, after fees uh, shakes out to 594 net profit every single month. So the profit that I'm making is actually more than what my entire mortgage taxes and, and, um, and insurance is. And um, Red, I know you just sent out a new a new model for your clients to use and to kind of help help us um but i i i hope my numbers are good um like i did the, just a quick like cash on cash calculation um like 33 like 34 percent cash on cash return i mean like there's people out there that are looking at you know they're hoping to like score like 12 percent 15 percent at a highest and to think i have the 34 percent cash on cash is just wild um but Again, that can be in a little bit of an anomaly, but it's possible. Like I, I want to tell you that, like though an anomaly, I do feel like it's completely possible to find these types of deals and capitalize on these types of of people. And the tenant is a good tenant, you know. Um, we gave someone a really nice place that they really wanted, and they're really happy there and close to family. And it just, it's you're able to make money while also giving some something good to someone else. Right. And Alex, you know, you mentioned <clears throat> that they're out there and the deals are out there 100%. It's just about having the ability to find them, 
to secure them, having people that can structure that investment for you to make sure that it's going to work long term, right? Making sure you're not buying something for 65 and someone tells you it needs 1500 and it ends up needing 15,000. Right. You know, um, and, and those are things that you were able to trust. And I know that that's hard, but you basically came into the program and you trusted me yeah. and you used all my people, my whole team. You and I communicated on every aspect of this. We look for the property together. We discussed the offer together, right? I managed the rehab for you. Everything went exactly how, how we thought it was going to go. And then you mentioned the tenant too. And I remember you and I going over these applications, talking about which tenant to choose. We're looking through the criminal background histories. We're looking through all of the credit reports. We're looking through the background checks, trying to make sure, hey, is this the tenant that we want for our unit? How has the tenant that we chose been? Have you had any issues? Has ha, Have they been a good, a good tenant for you? Yeah. I mean, other than just like some maintenance things, you know, the, my, the, the AC, it just needed a little tune up recently. You know, we would have had to do that anyways, regardless of the tenant. We had a little bit of a leaky toilet. We would have had to do that regardless of the tenant, you know? So there's just, from the tenant perspective, yeah, it's been great. And it's so nice. Like that money comes in on time <laughs> every single month. It's just an automatic process. So that makes it even easier because in the back of your mind, you're not like, oh, I hope they're able to pay it or are they going to be late or any type of thing like that, that may perhaps a traditional cash landlord would have to worry about. So yeah, it's the management company, they send it and it's there in the account every single month. <laughs> How nice is that? So Alex, so basically what that did, so your first one, absolute home run. Mm -hmm. And what I tell a lot of people, a lot of people watch this video and they say, wow, Alex did this. It was so easy for him to do this. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows at home, it's only easy to do this if you have the people in place, number yeah. one, and you have the team in place. <laughs> And then you have the investor like you who trusts the process, who says, okay, I am going to take the leap of faith and I am going to do this. I'm going to trust Rhett and his team to onboard this thing and let them work. And that is exactly what you did. And you come out of this thing with almost a 40% cash on cash return. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty wild. And, and to be clear, yes, like, as we're talking about it, it sounds just like a skip in the park, but no, there, there's so many people involved in Rhett. That was really a big hesitancy for me is I'm out of state. How am I going to go see this property as much as I should? How am I going to do these things? How am I going to communicate? I work full time. How am I going to manage this? But Rhett, you've done a great job. I mean, I think the team that you have, um, aligns with your values and your expectations, which, which makes it even easier um, because everyone is almost rooting for you to, to succeed. And when you succeed, they succeed. So it's a very, um, I guess, a symbiotic relationship um, that works out for everyone. So I can wholeheartedly say without your team, I definitely wouldn't have been able to do this. Um, you know, just insurance, mortgage, real estate agent, contracting team, property management company. Um, it's been really great. And yeah, I, you do have to, especially, you know, for new investors like me, you know, of course I've, I've dealt with real estate agents and contractors and things like that, but I've always been project manager myself, you know? So there is a little bit of a mindset shift that you have to have to trust the process. Let, let happen what would happen and trust those that are on your team. Um, and that took a little bit of time, but now it's, it's comes natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Alex, you said something there that is so unbelievably true. And it's what a lot of investors don't understand. And you said, you mentioned a symbiotic relationship and it's so interesting that you mentioned that because that has taken me over 10 years to create. And what I mean by that is you have to create a system that everybody's making money and everybody, it has to work for everybody. 
right? So the real estate agents get paid. The management companies make money. The contractors make money. You make money, right? Everyone's making money. And then at the end of the day, somebody gets a beautiful home to live in. They get taken off the street or they get taken out of an awful situation. They get moved into a beautiful home and then they get a fresh start at life. So there's no losers. Everybody wins. And yeah. having a system that everybody wins is so hard to build. But once you build it, no one's going to ever want to screw it up because there's a, everybody is, there, nobody is, is jealous. Nobody is upset. Everyone's making money and everyone's coming out on top. So uh, it, it's just, it's great that you realize that because to have success as an out-of-state investor, you need that. You need that system. Yeah. Um, and you then do. you mentioned something else, you know, you being an out-of-state investor, how do I, how do I manage it? How do I, how am I a project manager of something that I'm out of state on? And I, I ask so many of my clients this, but how many times have you been to this property and how many times have you seen it in person? None. <laughs> not, not a single time. I mean, I saw it in pictures and then I think our real estate agent like sent a quick video, you know, after the fact, but uh, yeah, not, not, nothing. <laughs> None. Unbelievable. Would you ever have thought if I told you five years ago, you would buy a property without ever seeing it, put a tenant in there without ever seeing it and have $600 direct deposited in net profit into your account every single month like clockwork? No. Yeah, I mean, definitely not. I mean, five years ago, I don't even think I had the capability to even understand like what that may look like. But now, of course, like I've done it once you know, rinse and repeat kind of a thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been, it's been really enlightening. Um, it's been a great experience and I've learned tons. Honestly, I, I keep a, I even keep like a, a, in my notes on my phone, I just write down like key things that I've learned just like as a process, like, Hey, remember this, think about this. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been great. Well, Alex, I'm super, super proud of you. And, you know, you got one. It, it's hard to have a property that functions better than your first one. We have another one under contract that is going to also be a fantastic deal. And, and something about you that separates you from a lot of other people is you're extremely patient. But when you find the right deal, you jump on it and you don't let it go. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to teach. Well, I think you taught me that actually a little bit because you kind of get, you know, after I found this deal and I saw the numbers, I immediately told you, I'm going to go get another one. And you kind of pumped the brakes on me and you, you said, hey, let's close on this one. Let's rent it out, find stability in the tenant, find stability, and then we can go again. So yeah, I've had that property since last year and I'm just now, 10 months later, getting another property. Um, I had some things going on in life that, you know, I wanted to finish up first and then, you know, I could commit to it. And that's something that you've taught me. And that's something that I feel is so valuable is slow and steady, like will win the race, you know, and um, being pragmatic and being intentional and thoughtful with your, with your properties is going to be better than just like, you know, throwing a piece of pasta against the wall and hoping that it sticks. That's something that you've taught me and something I've been able to learn throughout the process. But yeah, I've waited a whole year almost to get another one. Now I think I'm, um, I think I'm kickstarting a little bit more now. Um, so yes, I want to rent this one out and then probably in like a month or two, once there's stability, yeah, let's start exploring. But yeah, once you're in it, you kind of have to, once you've made that decision, you kind of have to like go in and go fast because the markets even now is really crazy still. So um, yeah, I, I think you're you're totally right. Just being pragmatic and, and intentional on on your moves is it's going to pay out in the, in the long run. Yeah. And in, in the short run, obviously. Right, right. And you are the epitome of that. So Alex, over the next 10 years, where do you see your growth and where do you see your portfolio 10 years from now? 
for 10 years. That's a long time. Um, I have a, I have a seven year goal. Um, okay. Let's hear the seven. Okay. So my goal, um, you know, within seven years, and that's kind of like an age thing, you know, by the time I'm 40, um, I kind of want to consider leaving corporate America. Um, don't get me wrong. I love my job. I have like, I'm, I'm so lucky to, to be able to, to do what I do. Um, but at the same time, kind of want to do my own thing. And I really like this. So within seven years, um, I really want to acquire like two units a year. And those two units, um, some of them I'm hoping would be multifamily. Um, I'm, you know, so I think if I'm, you know, just structuring it, <clears throat> I want to be able to leave corporate America within or consider leaving within seven years, um, two units a year, that would be 14 units. And some of those may have multiple units in it. Um, um, you know, I think next year I want to get one more this year. I want to get one more, maybe single family home. And then next year, maybe even like trying to find someone in your coaching program or trying to find an investor myself to like maybe even invest in a small building um something with with multiple doors on it i think would really help like make that seven year goal achievable or even considering to to achieve it uh but yeah i i want to see myself with i mean if i have to put a number on it um i've kind of done the math um i would want to say perhaps like 20 like 20 doors at least you know by within the next seven years which um isn't like isn't huge growth i think it's slow steady pragmatic um i'm working full time um so yeah i, I think i think that would be a, a goal for me seven to ten years i think it's a hundred percent achievable and, and alex again I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the channel today and I, you've been so gracious with your time the last thing i'm going to ask you is for the people watching this right now who are considering getting in to Section 8 real estate investing and who are considering the program and who are just considering changing their lives because they, may, they might be in corporate America or they might be in a job that they're not happy with or they're in a position that they want to get out of, what would you tell them? Um, don't be scared to bet money on yourself, honestly. Like, don't be scared to like bet on yourself because chances are like, you're gonna succeed you may stumble at first and that's something that i would tell you is things are going to happen you know things are going to happen you're going to have to be able to to deal with some stress you're going to have to be able to adapt and be agile through some problems um you know for example you know we had even delays outside of our control with the section 8 office that we just had to deal with there was just nothing we could do besides just wait on section 8 to say yes approve let this tenant in your house you know that that took 4 weeks so it's just being able to adapt um is really key um but yeah i think um don't be scared to bet on yourself um i know it's you know, twenty thousand dollars was our first investment, or twenty one thousand, and that's a lot of that's a lot of money. Um, but I think if you if you look at this as a long term investment, you know, like these are long term deals and long term investments. You 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 have to have that mindset of hey, this is long term. It may take me six years to make my money back, but for us, it was more about cash flow. Honestly, it was more about what kind of cash flow do we have coming in. The debt really wasn't. Um, it really didn't scare us. Honestly, um, it didn't. Um, yeah, the, the debt really wasn't a, a thing. It was, hey, oh my gosh, I'm making thirty four percent of my money. That's what I'm talking about. You know. <laughs> right. So yeah, I would say, do it. Like if you if you think this is for you and you think that you are going to be fulfilled and you want to explore the side of things like don't don't be scared to bet on yourself like just just do it have a conversation with with you right of course um do your research um yeah come up with a plan kind of come up with you know an, an achievable plan that has certain milestones and you're able to to have this plan be 
a part of your decision making skills and your decision making process. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I would say. I think that's fantastic advice. And guys, if you have any questions for Alex, please leave them in the description below or in the comment section below. Alex will get in there. I'm sure he'd love to answer some of, of your questions and sure. I'll keep everyone up to date on, on Alex's progress as he continues to add these properties. And a couple of years from now, Alex, I want to get you back on the channel so you can talk about how you went from one to 20 and how you're done with corporate America and you're living off your, off your rental income. That'd be great. I, I look forward to it. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Please leave your questions, comments below. Uh, if you want to get started, if you want to be like Alex and you want to do this thing abroad, send me an email in the description um, and we'll get you started.